Hello? There's, a, there's an echo right now. Can you mute your watch? You might. Hello, Guy, can you hear me now? Yes. All right, sounds good. Well, uh, I, <clears throat> lately it's been better if I enter meetings this way, okay? Can you hear me? I can. Sounds good, thank you. Is anybody on yet? Can you hear me? Hey. A little bit. Keep keep talking to me. Well, I, I can hear this Mark when he talks and everybody else, so it should be working pretty well. Yeah, I'm, uh, just so you know, if anybody's looking, I'm I'm muted on my computer, but I'm but I'm on on my phone, and that seems to work out better from my where I live. All right, so. I like watching this fiasco from the other side of tech. It's kind of funny. And you guys can hear us fairly well, right? 
we can always. Hear I hear you, you fine. <laughs> yeah. We've got we've got a individual camera, individual speaker, an iPad, a laptop, and a TV, and we're trying to work out the tech on all of them so they work together. <laughs> Fortunately, David's an expert, an uh, amateur expert. Oh. <laughs> Youngest person in the world. That's right. <laughs> I know. That's, yeah. If he's got hair, he must have something. <laughs> Yeah, I'm 
on Zoom. We're all quiet this morning. <laughs> morning. Good morning, everybody. Hey there. Thank you. 
Hey. September 11, 1865, which, as I get in, is, is interesting because that's 136 years before what I think was the most unifying event our country has experienced in my lifetime. ATO was founded with the goal of peace and reconciliation of the greatest societal experiment the world has ever met. ATO was founded by Otis Allen Glacebrook, who was a Confederate Civil, Civil War veteran and whose people were defeated, many of their cities burned, and much of their country ravaged. Glazebrook, who had helped bury the dead of both sides and witnessed the bitterness and hatred that followed the end of the war as a student at Virginia Military Institute, knew that true peace would not come from force of law, but rather from the hearts of men who were willing to work to rekindle the spirit of unity, freedom, and goodwill that formed the foundation of our Declaration of Independence and then of our Constitution. So the, all of that leading up, the creed of our fraternity is what I wanted to read today. And I'm going to take a couple of liberties because Alpha Tau Omega is a male only organization. So there's some mans and brotherhoods in here that I'll just take liberty to change um, 
that the creative balance on that to bind people together in a society based on eternal and immutable principles, where the bond is strong as right itself and is lasting as human. To know no north, no south, no east, no west, but to know people as two brothers. To teach that true people the world over should stand together and contend for supremacy of good over evil. To teach not politics, but morals. To foster not partisanship, but the recognition of true merit wherever found. To have no narrow limits within which to work together for the elevation of our society than the outlines of the world. So our, our four-way test. Uh, is not screwed it up, can't think of it. No. <laughs> <laughs> is it the truth? Is it fair to have all heard? Will it build good will and have a friendship? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible. Thank you, Chris. Who is our so Mike? You're our sergeant. Yeah. Sorry, now. Okay. Here today we have 18 members for breakfast, and how many of them? About five or six there. 20 online. Huh? 20 online. Just 20 show, online. It doesn't show everybody. There you awesome. go. And we have one guest, and that is our esteemed past district governor, Claudia Kennedy, who is the bride of one of our members, Frank Cheney, who is on the screen there. So, happy to have you, Claudia. <laughs> All right. Uh, so I'm going to I'm going to call on you again. So I'm going to you as well, Rick. If you want to give our first days and anniversaries, and uh, there you are. And you guys can after that, y'all go ahead and talk about our Polio Plus efforts so far. Yes, sir. Good morning, Gate City. Good morning. Good morning. All right. We have uh, a few club anniversaries and some member birthdays, and uh, we're going to do two weeks this week since we won't be here next week, so we're going to be looking forward here as well. So uh, let's see. Club anniversaries. Uh, Christy Melbourne, are you on this morning? She's online. Online. All right. Christy, how many years you got? I believe I've got two years. I mean, Two. Two, yes. Big man there. <laughs> Good job. And Claudia, where, where's your uh, other hand today? Oh, so, yeah, why is he not here with us today? You're here. Oh, no, that's a good question. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Great, glad to have you part of our club. But how many years do you have at the club? One. Yeah, one. Yeah. Yeah, between one and three. <laughs> Do me too. <laughs> okay. All right. And uh, Cooper Trotter, uh, Cooper, are you online this morning? Not that I can see. No, I don't see you there. Okay. Cooper has 14 with us. And uh, Mr. Class President, Ralph Jones. Yes. <laughs> and Ralph has 14 years old. How about Mr. Buster Lewis? I got you. Buster's a court so he's asleep. Oh, he's got four prior, that's right. Well, uh, you guys, what did Buster next week? Buster's got a birthday coming up on the 28th. And let's see, we have some wedding anniversaries. And once again, uh, Mr. Ralph Jones, he and one year are going to be celebrating their 16th anniversary coming up on October 26th. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and that's it for today. What about a polio club? Polio Plus. Uh, hope everybody got the vote went out yesterday on Polio Plus. Um, we are just running a little bit behind. As I said in my note, Mike and I were talking about this last week. Just a convolution of things that was not getting the need together. We're not having the normal attendance at our other events that we normally have. So usually we're well beyond our goal. We have a very modest goal this year of 1,000. But we're running behind. So, just really need everybody to, to pay attention to this, and I know we can think about it, and uh, I, I know how you all respond. I'm sure we're going to be making our numbers here. So, there's two ways. One is a one-time gift, polio plus $100 for this year, 
And those of you who can, if you're comfortable with it, please consider signing up for the annual commitment. And as little as $100 uh, once a year, and uh, you can even write a check for that. You can send it directly uh, to Rotary International at Mark Portfolio Plus, or we'll build it uh, through the club. So it doesn't get much easier than that. So we're, we've made a good dent in our goal of $4,000, and uh, we just need to push it on over the top. And let's not forget, President Guy, last week, we all have him on record, he said he was going to match 10 to 1. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I wrote a check for $300, you guys have not met my match. <laughs> 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 so we're, we're at about 2 <laughs> <back to nine. laughs> Right, so if y'all want to see me holding up some more money, it's got to come from the other direction first. All right, come on, let's 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 that president guy hold up some more money. What, what is our total goal? Look, where are we? We did four thousand, four, and we're at two. Four thousand and two thousand. Yeah, we're yeah. at two, and we were at six last year. Six thousand. Yeah. Right? We were over six thousand last year. So I don't, I don't know if you guys online hearing that, but we're we're well short of our goal. So if you have a if you have an inkling to commit to Polio Plus, please, you can even do it through jail and through the club. So let Jail know and he'll add it to your bill, or you can send a check and we'll get make sure it gets allocated. Yeah, well, that actually, we make a, a, a simple point. Yeah, and, and we have all this stuff, and, and Rick needs to be that person. Yes. Yeah. That gets all that information so that he can know what needs to be sent to Rotary and what needs to be built and so forth. So yes, it needs to be a simple point. And some of you had already let me know what you had done, and I apologize. I think I've got the record. Please resend that to me again, because I want to make sure everybody gets credit for that. And I thought I could get the amount that you had given to Rotary International, from Rotary International, but those records are all guarded. I don't know about that. So I need to know from you, if you gave the record to our eye, how much you gave us, so we'll have a record of the four hours. Right there. Yeah, sure. We need 20 more people to write hundred dollar checks. I'm gonna write the first one. Well, yeah. write to the Rotary Foundation. Yeah. Rotary Foundation. Now we're talking. Yeah. There we go. There we go. Come on. Who else is on this? Come on. We have yeah. eight twenty checks. There we go. Come on. We got three. We got three. We got three. Five, come on. Five. All right. Come on. Yeah, we're done. Come on. Come on. Come on. Online. See what you got. I mean. You have no excuse for having to talk to your house. I'm happy to do it. So, yeah, great. Uh, great. 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 I don't get that. I don't think I can see it. So, if you could send that email to me, I will send it through the email. So, I'll make sure. And I thought it would be a good thing for our thing. So, I'll be there. Look forward to today, folks. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, today we have a special presentation, and that's the reason that we have our past district governor, Claudia Canada, with us today, who is our foundation chair. And she's doing an uh, incredible job, and I enjoy working for her as the annual funds, <laughs> annual funds chair, and uh, that person is, luckily, is in our presence today. So, Claudia, I'm going to turn it over to yeah. you and let you do your thing, Thank as you. I know you can. Thank you, Mike. <clears throat> and I love this club, and I have said a few times, if I didn't belong to Summit, I would belong to this club, because I'm glad to be here. This is only the second in-person meeting by the 10 days in March. So thanks for having me. It's a great breakfast. I like that. Now, my passion with Rotary is the Rotary Foundation. Because I like working and being with people who understand the importance of making the world a better place by giving their time, their talent, and their treasure to Rotary. And this, this club is exceptional in terms of the effort and the volunteerism, the financial support, and the promotion and leadership that you've given our district 
And so in terms of that financial support, I just want to say a few things. You were talking about the six thousand dollar bill to cover the plus. Last year, this club with eight members, just last year alone, twenty-seven thousand dollars to the annual club. You're all kind of giving. All time giving is $453,000 for the Rotary Club. So, with all of the contributions that this club makes, I would like to mention that you have five major donors in this club. And today, we're going to recognize the six. But the five major donors. Some are here, some are online, and some are elsewhere. Mike Conrad, Chuck Langdon, Dan Quinn, Tom Richardson, Rusty Hockey. So I would thank you. So I'd now like to announce the sixth member of Big City Rotary Club who has become a major donor. Mr. Governor elect Chris Justice, can you please stand up? He's already wearing his major donor pin. <laughs> 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 but, but, but in addition is this beautiful crystal recognizing and engraved on it in grateful recognition from the Rotary Foundation of Rotary International. This is awarded to Chris and Stephanie Justice for their significant contribution to Rotary and the Rotary Foundation. Right. So Chris, thank you so much for everything you do. Your time, your money, your energy, your, your vision. And by God, he's going to be a visionary this time. <laughs> <laughs> Things are already changing. <laughs> so thank you Rick, for everything that you have done and will do. Thank you, um, Claudia, and I, I, I want to just, um, you know, thank you for the challenge that uh, you put towards me a couple of years ago um, when I accepted this track. You know, you said uh, that you know you felt that uh, if someone, you know, someone was going to be a district governor, that they should become a major donor, um, and I did. There's no requirement. But you, you know, you said that you felt that that was, you know, important, and I said, um, and I, I it away, and you know, I was uh, not, not very close at that point. <laughs> but, so, uh, you know, I made up a lot of ground in the uh, last couple of years, um, and you know, through your passion and you know all you've done through the foundation, I mean, you, you really have convinced me of the, the merits of it, um, and, and I really appreciate that. I appreciate your work. Well, thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. It's a very simple step. If you um, have personal contributions to the Rotary Foundation of $10,000, and that's over time, or we can take it as a long sum contribution, $10,000 of personal contribution is, is a major donor size. Or you can do it over three years. You can make the commitment. And, and then we pay it over a three year period. But I'll be glad to let you know we've got several in our club that are very close. Very close. And yeah. I would be more happy to let you know about that. You know, that's where sure. you stay. Let the foundation people talk too much. They'll take the whole time. <laughs> We're going to keep going. So um, I'm going to call on Matthews. Matthew's going to talk about our uh, service project that's coming up. If everybody received the sign up for it. Good morning, everybody. I hope you're doing well today. Um, I believe it was Monday I sent out the Sign Up Genius, the first of probably 30 emails you'll get from me uh, regarding this, but we're about halfway there for signups. And, you know, I appreciate what everybody's doing and I uh, fully expect that this will be, you know, a couple of weeks till we get, um, get it filled up, which is, you know, great. And, uh, you know, just keep pushing. That's about it. Any questions? Thank you, Matthew. So Matthew did tell me that the way he allocated the days were full days that were open and that's, you know, they have a sign up. So he picked days where we could be there the whole time versus going to multiple locations. So that's the days we have. And we're, if y'all remember, it's um, DSW. 
outside the yes. yourself. It's All right. Turns out 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 <laughs> Uh, we're here. You want to about the scholarship? How are we going with that? Come on, y'all. Mike is here. Okay. So I've reached out to all four high schools. I've had face to face with three of the four. Hopefully, I get in with Grimsley today. Reached out to them again yesterday. And what they're doing is they're actually forming small committees to meet with students to help them write the application, to help them get the um, applications out. So what Smith, Dudley, and Paige have told me is by December, we should get in a flood of applications for this thing. That's really exciting. Um, they're also posting it on the senior websites and also on newsletters. So the word's getting out, and hopefully I can get Grimsley on board today. And thank you all individually for um, I'm sending me messages and I've sent out the applications individually also. So hopefully December we're gonna start getting them in. Thank you, Judy. So just, just a quick reminder, this is an altruistic effort for our club. So these people that you're giving applications to are relatives of yours, they're immediately disqualified. So I just want to make sure we don't get any hang-ups and you know I get 500 emails complaining about our scholarship from the very beginning this is for supposedly outside of our club so um it should be a big deal chris and dan have a, a big bet on how many applicants we get so make sure to spread the word far and wide so chris can probably get up some more money <laughs> see where we are um dan uh, dan is on did, did you ever get a final tally on pig stock dan I did, uh, with just a hair under $18,000. So um, an exceptional day, uh, given the circumstances. So well done to the club. Gate City's effort was a little over 6,000 of, uh, of the total 18. Thank you, Dana. So that's good. We, you know, this is what happened in our district um, with the DA. District, whatever. Our district had our president's group said, hey, we want to do it. And that's why we ended up talking to Dan and saying, hey, let's do it. Because he, he pulled the plug on us. I was told by one of Dan's employees, they wouldn't even talk about it at work because Dan was so depressed. So Dan, I'm glad we pulled it off, but. Um, Buster was going to make an announcement about the past president's grants. It's actually, well, I have the, the list on my tablet. We'll wait till Buster comes back. He's in Portland. So we have Grand Pappy, Lewis stepping in. I mean, it's so hey guy. <laughs> Don't forget to announce the changing of the guard. Oh, yeah. Changing the guard sign up. Oh, yeah. Right, so our changing of the guard sign up is our Christmas party, which is December 10th. The sign up for Sinatra. Who knows if we're going to be able to have that meeting or not? Because we're going forward. If it, you know, if the state steps in and says we can't do it, then all we can do is cancel it last minute. So. Did you send that sign up on our right? It was set up by Tony. Yeah, I missed it. Uh, I, you know, I, Tony, I'm sure I'll send it out again, and I'll send a reminder email. I'll yeah. see if I can find it, and I'll send it through email as well. But it's, um, it's at the Grand Over in December 10th. It's about $55 a person. That includes alcohol, appetizers, I think the format is um, heavy or nerves, but um, I'm not 100% sure of that. I'll send it back out and list all that stuff. Right. 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 Tommy, I think one of you, Tommy told me we sat out and said his wife and the dog went to speak for two weeks working remotely and said, This is the dog. <laughs> <laughs> Gate City, 
in spite of all the crap, I, I give our, we should give ourselves a <laughs>
Yes, we have one other special guest today. We didn't introduce him earlier, but Dr. Bernard is with us. And I believe you're on the West Coast, so thank you for joining in early. Um, Dr. Bernard is a 32-year Rotarian. He is the current director of International Circle District 7690. He's the former director of International Service and Disaster Relief District 5280. He's a member of the Global Grants Committee of District 7690. He's current Area 9 Foundation Advocate. He's president and co-director of Operation Footprint Baja Project for Crippled Children. And he is the past executive director for the American Board of Pediatric Medicine. So we are happy to have you here with us and looking forward to hear about hearing um, about Operation Footprint. And he is promoting a global grant. So thank you. Which we are supporting. Yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you got to hold that up one more time for me. That was too quick. What's the last two? Two one two. Okay. No, he's on here, but I can't unmute him. Check and see if you can unmute it on your phone. He says he is unmuted. I see him muted. Yeah, yeah he's definitely muted. Um, you can. <laughs> Yeah, it won't let me unmute him. to unmute his phone, I don't think it's... Yeah, Mark, you're going to have to unmute your phone. So if you pull up your phone, there should be a spot where it says mute, unmute. I just muted his laptop. Nope, still can't hear you. No. So this did work this morning prior to prior to our meeting. So you still show us muted on on the app, and we can't unmute you. Hold on your hold on your phone. phone on that phone number. It shows it as muted. But I here. Look. No, he's still muted. I'm gonna I'm gonna send you an invite to unmute. It may show up there. Can somebody just call him and plug it plug his phone into the aux port? I mean, does anybody have an aux on their phone? Nothing like that. I don't know if I have to. How are y'all yeah. plugged into this? Is this blue too? Yeah. So you see it shows up, yeah. up right there. It's fine. Does that aux? It does. Um, yeah, we, we, we know you can hear us, but try, try, try hanging up with your phone and then reconnecting to audio with your phone. He doesn't have a mic on this thing. It's it's breaking up, but it's with the static. Really interesting. Yeah, yeah. 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 
<laughs> Typical for this year. Yeah. I don't think I'm a double star. I typically would, but well, it worked. <laughs> Mark, are you okay with are you okay with Claudia talking about it? I'm okay. Can you hear me? We can hear you. All right. Can you hear me? We can hear you. All right, we're good to go. All right. Miracles of tech. We can send people to uh Saturn or uh, probes to Saturn, but we can't do this. All right. First of all, thank you everybody for the opportunity to speak to you um, on this grant. Um, I'm going to switch to my screen so I can show you this. And uh, I want to confirm on your end that you can see this. Hang in there. Can you all see this PowerPoint? Yes. All right, we're good to go. Um, the particular grant that I'm going to be speaking about uh, is the newest uh, aspect of something with which I've been involved for over 40 years, which originally called the Baja Project for Crippled Children when we were only in Mexico, and then we expanded into other countries in Central America. I'll talk about that in a minute. And then about 14 months ago, my group uh, went to Agra, India to assess the potential for uh, this project or this particular location being, uh, being one that we can add to what we've been doing over the past 40 plus years. And we liked what we saw, and that led to a grant that I'm in the process of writing through my own club, which is Southern Pines, and uh, that your club uh, will be participating in, and I want to fill you all in on it. So moving forward, uh, the objectives of the grant are this. We, the hospital that we work in is a very nice, small, privately owned hospital owned by two doctors that are true humanitarians, Indian docs in Agra that are, that are true humanitarians. They do this out of the goodness of their heart. Uh, and it, it, it's, a, it's a nice facility. The thing is that for the kind of surgeries that we're doing, uh, we need to increase the functional capacity of the hospital, uh, both in the recovery area and in the operating suite. And if we do that, through which I'll talk about a little bit on, the, on what we need for the grants, uh, we will do at least twice the number of cases we were able to do uh, 14 months ago. Uh, because a lot of those cases are kids uh, with problems on both sides. If you look at the photo on your right, you'll see that this child has a club foot. Uh, the foot is actually, you can't see the front of the foot because it's pointed backwards. So most of these feet, by the time they start walking, as I will show you, are upside down and backwards. And uh, uh, the way these operating rooms are set up with the lights and, and, uh, and the tables, uh, they're not set up for what's, what we call bilateral or two feet at the same time. And we now have the team and the, the human resources uh, to, to get all of this done. So that's, that's something we're going to need to fix. Um, the other thing is what we've been doing for well over 40 years is we've been educating uh, local docs as well as uh, residents uh, from the U.S. that we've been training that whole time on the kind of approaches that we take to do this kind of neglected surgery and, uh, and, and uh, hopefully to motivate them when we're gone uh, to continue to do this uh, out of the goodness of their hearts. In other words, we can give them the knowledge and, the, uh, and the, they have the skills. Uh, these are orthopedic surgeons, so they've got the skills uh, we, we need to give them the specific knowledge that they need to do this. And then, uh, then of course, the will to do it uh, and the attitude. Not everybody's a Rotarian. So um, I don't have to sell this idea to Rotarians. Uh, we, we are doers. Uh, the other thing is, and this is something that I didn't realize until we got to India and was educated by the local Indian Rotarians and, uh, and Dr. Shah, who's one of our directors, is that uh, because of the the uh, the nature of of uh, 
the healthcare delivery there, which is on a dollars and cents basis, uh, a lot of the, 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 mass, the mass of poor people there don't have access to medical care. It, it, and so um, they have to learn that it's truly free uh, because evidently, and I don't know this firsthand, but secondhand, I got that, um, uh, that they are subjected to maybe hidden costs. And so um, uh, it's up to the, the Rotary Club of Agra Taj Mahal and, and other Rotarians there to make these people know that truly what we're doing is free, which is what we've been doing. Uh, for over 40 years in these other countries. Incidentally, what's not in the in the, what's not in this uh, PowerPoint is the fact that my group uh, pays its own way to go. We don't take out any money in any of the monies in in anything that we raise, whether it comes from Rotary, which is the bulk of it, or whether it comes from private donations. A hundred percent of it goes into uh, into the purchase of supplies and so forth. We pay our own way, and uh, we are helped mightily. Uh, by Rotarians locally who will either uh, bring food to the hospital uh, or cover um, or deeply discount work work deals out with the hotels, deeply discount the hotels for us and so forth and so on. And uh, in the evenings, uh, welcome us to their homes and uh, have dinner for us and things like that. So um, for me as a Rotarian for all these years, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I feel very much at home, but uh, uh, they are very open-hearted to us all over the world where we have gone. So as Rotarians, you should be proud of that. So moving right along, uh, we a little bit about our history. Um, the project began in Mexico in 1976. I was actually a senior medical student at the time, and, uh, and uh, that sold me on where I wanted to do my residency. And so uh, the 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 my residency started in 1977. I did it at County USC Medical Center in LA, Los Angeles. And, uh, and uh, I had an epiphany. I can honestly tell you it was, it was truly an epiphany. I looked into this ocean of pathology, much of which incidentally was polio. We've done hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of polio cases. Uh, and I wanna talk about a little bit of what I saw in India as well since we, uh, we as Rotarians are trying to wipe this out or help wipe it out. Uh, but a lot of it was polio, a lot of it was club feet, which is what you see in the little girl uh, in the photo there, and a lot of cerebral palsy, a lot of birth defects, as well as acquired neuromuscular defects, which is, which is what polio is. Uh, based on our successes and through word of mouth, uh, we then expanded into El Salvador about 20 years later, then we added Honduras, uh, where we are now. And then one of our directors, Bhavesh Shah, who has been with us 20 years, he came to us as a, as a resident that we helped train and stuck with it. His vision, he's Indian by birth, though he was raised in the U.S. and he practices in San Antonio, Texas. But his dream was to add uh, uh, India uh, to our, to our, under our, in, our, under our um, uh, auspices to deliver this, uh, this care and this education to the local docs. So over the 40, 40 plus years that we've been doing this, we've done well over 3,000 major foot and ankle reconstructive surgeries. We've seen over 30,000 patients, about 80% of our, our kids. Uh, it's designed mostly for children, but we hate to turn people away. So uh, if somebody comes to us and we can fit them into our schedule, we do them if they're adults. And we've trained well over 200 uh, just the podiatric uh, residents in the U.S., but we've trained orthopedists around the world uh, in these countries that we, uh, that we do our work in. So I want to let you know that uh, even though the reason for the development of the condition is different, uh, polio and clubfoot uh, look very much the same when you get it on the foot, when it, when it uh, affects the foot. Uh, polio, of, of course, can affect the entire body, uh, but this is basically what it looks like, where the foot is uh, is turned under, and uh, and if you can catch, at least in club foot, if you can catch it very young, uh, in other words, in the U.S., I'd see these kids within the first two weeks of life, and you start manipulating the foot, and you cast it, and you change the cast every week, and then about the fifth, at the fifth cast change, 
Uh, I will lay the baby on on uh, on its parent's uh, stomach, and uh, you put a little bit of Emla cream, which numbs the skin, on the back of the uh, the heel, and you take a little blade and you pop the Achilles tendon. It's no more it's no more complicated than a child getting their ears pierced, and then you continue to cast. And 90% of those feet, that's, that's what they need, and that's all they need. But if you, wait, if you wait even six months, let alone a year, let alone what you're seeing in these photos, it's a completely different ballgame. And now you're looking at a major surgical reconstruction. So, for instance, the feet in the, 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 the child in the, on the left, uh, we know we could get a foot like that around uh, straight in one session. If you look in the lower right, that foot is so adapted uh, that it's it's a risk uh, to do it in one session. You can get away with it, but uh, you run the risk of putting too much um, traction on the blood major blood vessels that feed the foot as you're bringing it around. And so um, those are the feet that we'll do in two sessions. Well, what does that mean to the patient? What it means is that since we're only in these countries once a year, they get. They have to wait two years to get the first foot down, and if they have it done on the other side, if they have both feet affected, uh, it's a four-year process for them, and they're more than willing to do it because uh, we're basically the only show in town. So, uh, and uh, I'm, by no means are we unique. You've got Operation Smile that so many people know about. There are a lot of the American humanitarian groups there, but when you when you think about the, the, the amount of patients going untreated, it's, it's really a drop in the bucket. And sometimes people say, well, you know, you really can only get to, what, 35 kids, uh, 35 patients a year. I mean, what about all the rest? I said, well, uh, what about them? If you get to one child, you're, you're, you're fixing them 100% of the time. And not only are you fixing the child, but the burden of carrying these kids around or wheeling them around in wheelbarrows and which is what they do because wheel wheelchairs um, are sometimes less efficient in on dirt, on dirt roads uh, or in these small towns. And, uh, and when it gets muddy, they're much better off moving these kids around in, uh, and themselves in, uh, in wheelbarrows because of the large tires. So you don't think about these things in the, in, in the, in the U S but uh, that's what they're facing. Anyway, uh, uh, so when I think about uh, over all of these years uh, helping these kids, uh, not only are you helping the child, you're helping the entire family. Uh, it's truly a sociologic problem, and I'll talk about that a little bit. Here's a, here's a 15-year-old kid. Uh, she had never seen any doctor for any reason, let alone a specialist in the foot and ankle. And as you can see there, she's wearing normal high top shoes but her feet are so deformed that the that, that you see the direction that the feet are facing and when it when there's when this occurs people that are they're shunned these folks are shunned from society these kids or adults uh, uh their prospects for marriage and the normal kind of life that you and i live are very limited because people are afraid uh of the possibility of passing these conditions on so uh, it affects their entire lives. And, uh, and obviously, in the case of polio, uh, where a lot more than just the foot can be affected, it, it, it involves their ability to work and to earn a living and so forth and so on. So, again, the impact of fixing the foot or the deformity uh, affects their entire lives. This happens to be polio. Uh, 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 I think this kid was about a kid. He's about 20 years old. Kids to, uh, they're kids to us at 20. And, uh, and uh, there you see uh, what the foot is. Uh, I have an updated photo that I just got sent from India where this guy is riding a bicycle. Uh, we're, gonna put up on, we're gonna put it up on our website because he's now doing deliveries and so forth in uh, whatever he's doing in Agra. Uh, oops, sorry. So uh, I want you to tell me if you can, this worked when we tested it out before. I want you to tell me if you can see this video. Can you see this? Yes. All right, great. This is a little girl that was seen at about age four. Uh, she was operated, that was the year before my group got there. 
it's the typical it's the it's the typical uh uh deformity that one sees uh when one has polio or club feet and they start bearing weight because the more weight that they bear on it the more they are deforming the foot as you can see and then not so much in a kid like this but when the child grows uh, then the knee becomes affected, the hip becomes affected, low back, it's, uh, it, it works its way up the, up the skeleton. So I'm going to show you what it looks like postoperatively. And here she is postoperatively, and you'll see while it's not perfect, um, I'll show it to you again. Hold on. It's a pretty darn straight foot. And if we can get these kinds of deform, can you see it? Yeah. Yes. All right, good. And so uh, this, this is uh, the kind of work. Now, this kind of, by the way, this surgery uh, is not for amateurs. And incidentally, you would think that the orthopedic surgeons who are certainly well trained and they're doing, they're doing knees, they're doing hips, uh, they're doing occasional trauma. You would think they would know uh, how to correct these things because, let's face it, they're looking at this stuff right out their window or their front door uh, in, these, in, in these emerging nations. But the fact is what the orthopedists are doing are exactly the same things that they're doing in the, in, in the States. So the, the people that are doing the kind of work that we do are the people that are doing the kind of work that we do, basically. And so uh, even though they're trained surgeons and, it, and, it, uh, and it's easy to teach them and their, their manual skills are great, knowing how to approach these very complex conditions is a very different story. And so that's what we're there to teach them. Moving on, this is just part of our team. That's the little girl that you saw. Uh, post-operatively, you see her standing there. She's got a nice straight foot on, on the left side now. And uh, Bhavesh Shah, whose dream it was to bring our group there, who's one of our directors, is the guy in the Superman T-shirt there. And uh, I am one of uh, seven directors. You see five of them there right now. Uh, those are, those are uh, part of our group. And then the rest of the team is, uh, uh, it's hard to see, but the 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 man and woman that are here that I'm circling uh, that are in blues, those are the, the, uh, the Varshanaya, do doctors Varshanaya, Ankit and uh, Nimta. It's, there, it's through their effort that we got to Agra. And then you see a bunch of Rotarians there, uh, both Indian and, uh, and U.S., uh, that were part of the original team that brought us there. And the grant that I'm writing is the grant now to increase the functional capacity of the hospital. So a lot of us have been volunteers for a long, long time. And I want you to see in dollars and cents, using this as an example, just how powerful volunteerism is. So when you look at what it takes uh, to get these kids done uh, on a voluntary basis, you have the surgeons that are voluntary, the use of the hospital, the anesthesiologist and the anesthesia equipment and supplies, all the surgical supplies, the hardware that we're putting in there, the pins, the screws, the plates, the suture, the drapes, all of the things that you would normally associate with it. Then all the post-operative stuff, meaning the cast, the crutches, uh, and then the bracing. A lot of these, a lot of these uh, patients need long-term bracing, uh, particularly if they have polio-related deformities. Uh, and or foot orthotics, the physical therapy that they're going to need after surgery and so forth. If you work all of that in and we look back on the 3,000 cases that we've done, well, I would say the last 1,000 cases of them in the mod or more modern era. Um, can you hear me, by the way? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, it works out to about $750 per patient or per case. If I took that same case and did it in a hospital in the U.S., Los Angeles is where my, my career was for over 30 years, 38 years. Easy for an overnight stay, it's $50,000. And for those of you that have had surgery in hospitals, you know what I'm talking about. 
And so uh, when everybody says yes, in terms of volunteerism, that, that we can truncate that down to 750 bucks when I stop per case. When I started for almost four, over 40 years ago, it was about $500 a case. Well, uh, even though we get a lot of donations from, uh, from the medical industry in terms of supplies, we still have to buy a lot of stuff. And uh, in so doing, uh, costs go up. So uh, we're down, to, we're up to 750 a case. But I think that's rather remarkable if you, if you think about it when everybody says yes. So uh, the global grant we're talking about has this number. I'm more than happy to share it to you, with you. And uh, most of the grant is filled out in draft form uh, at RI. Uh, I'm still working on gathering up some money, and this is a, a, a simplistic way of looking at uh, at how you uh, delineate the costs. But if you multiply $750 per case times the number of cases we think we can do the next session, you have that figure, and then we need lights to accommodate uh, the third operating room and uh, and to accommodate doing two feet in the same session in the same rooms that are there an additional anesthesia machine, additional instrumentation that we did that we need to do all of these cases simultaneously. So we're looking at a grant that's a little shy of $57,000, and that's what our needs are. Um, I can tell you that over the last 30 years, since I've been a Rotarian for about 32, I guess this is my 33rd year, and I've written about nine grants for this project. I've written grants for other things as well, but... Um, by far, our funding has come from Rotary, uh, thankfully. And uh, we do get individual donations. Uh, uh, we get a very occasional corporate donation uh, over all of these years. And as I mentioned, we get the donations in kind from the medical industry so that Johnson & Johnson may, may donate um, um, casting material or tape or, or uh, bandaging and so forth. Uh, these other intermediaries like AmeriCares uh, would, uh, would donate the anesthesia or get it at the, the anesthesia meds, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But we still have to buy a lot. And that's where a lot of these dollars go. Um, we have a, an agreement. I've, I've, I thankfully our district uh, through DDF has agreed to match to, to, uh, to donate towards this grant up to $10,000 as a match uh, for clubs in 769 that are willing to support the grant. So in other words, if I can raise $10,000, I'm not there yet, but if I can raise $10,000 from clubs in our district, uh, our district will match with another 10,000. And then Rotary International, I'm not, here, I'm not here to give you a lesson on how, how grant writing works, but the, 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 just to cut to the chase, uh, Rotary International will match district money dollar for dollar, and under normal circumstances will match club money 50 cents on the dollar. However, because we as Rotarians have stepped up to the plate to meet the global, the, the COVID-19 pandemic, it has depleted the world fund to the extent that in this Rotary year, and who knows, where into the future uh, there is no 50 cents on the dollar club match. So what that means to all of us that are writing grants all over the world that are Rotarians, uh, our, our work, which is not easy to begin with in raising funds, is, is that much more of a challenge because that 50 cents on the dollar is not there. Uh, I'm not crying the blues. We're, we're, we have to meet the, 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 uh, the crisis of COVID. We did what we did as Rotarians. I'm, I'm not crying the blues. I'm just giving you the facts. So uh, uh, for glo where global grants are concerned, it's a little bit more, uh, it, it's more, ch not a little bit, it's more challenging for all of us that are doing this. Um, if you uh, need to get any more information, by all means, uh, uh, you can uh, reach it through me, through Claudia, through RI, through DACDB, and I'll give you all the other information uh, that you need. And, um, and, um, with that, I will go to Q and A. But before I do so, know that there is a there is an 18 or 19 minute video uh, that the group shot in uh, uh, in uh, Agra when we were there, uh, so that uh, anybody who wants to take a little bit 
deeper dive into what we're doing and 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 hearing from the locals there and seeing it in more detail, uh, you're you're welcome to watch that video. Uh, your club has it now and it can be shared. With that, I'll take any questions that come up. I'm, I'm not sure if, since it's switched. I don't know if you can hear us or not. Can you hear us? I hear you fine. Okay. Well, we're we're running out of time, so I'm going to adjourn our meeting. And if people have questions, they can come up and talk back and forth to you. So I just want to say thank you very much. Um, I chose, you know, as, as club president, we get some discretion in some of the foundation funds. And I chose to for our club to support this. I think it's an extremely worthy cause, as y'all can see. And if y'all want to support it individually, I think it'd be a great thing if we help them get to their goals. So at that, I'm going to adjourn our meeting if y'all want to ask Dr. Bernard's question. Thank you, Doc. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Proud to be a part of this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be here. I'll take it down. Then. Uh, 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 well, what I'm wondering is, um, You have you have my email. If anything you want to send to the club, you can send to me, and I'll make sure it all gets to them. I've sent that video to everybody already, and I know Lisa has some of your stuff too. So again, it's very worthy because I've done some. I'm a dentist. I've done some stuff with Operation Smile. Great work.